Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another section of our course Kubernetes for Testers. And in this section, we are going to talk about Kubernetes hands-on labs. So starting this section, we are going to talk a more hands-on lab scenario while discussing with Kubernetes itself because that's going to be more realistic while we learn Kubernetes and understand how we can relate Kubernetes with our real-time workflow that we used to do in our day-to-day -day life. So starting this section, we are going to talk something like how we can do a Selenium grid setup Again, if you are new to this particular section or new to this course in Kubernetes for Testers, you can find the complete discussion on Kubernetes for Tester in our YouTube channel in Exit Automation over here. So you can see there is something called as Kubernetes for Testers where we have already discussed about an introduction to Kubernetes for Testers, installing Kubernetes on Mac, understanding masters in Kubernetes for Testers, understanding nodes and how to work with parts, replication controllers, and services. So we discussed about all of them and also we made a small hands-on discussion while working with parts and replication controllers but not much in terms of the complete hands-on all these days because they were totally like a theoretical part but starting this section in section 2 we are going to talk more like a hands-on laboratory where we are going to talk about how we can perform a selenium grid setup kind of stuff. So we all know that Selenium is one of the most popular automation testing tool and the Selenium grid is something which anybody can perform an execution of test on multiple different browsers running on multiple different machines. So this Selenium grid setup can be either in a local machine or it can be over the cloud or it can be even a Docker container. So this is how the Selenium grid setup is going to look like in an architecture. So basically there will be a Selenium server, which is also known as a hub. And there is something called as client, which is also known as node maybe. And there are different kinds of nodes basically available. Something like Chrome node or the Firefox node or the node which is running the Opera browser. So it is just a generic node basically, but you can install multiple different browsers on each node to specify where you're going to run the test on which browsers. So Selenium server knows basically once the node has been registered that where the browsers are actually located and where to run the test on a specific browser request that you are making for. So that's what is Selenium Grid. We have already discussed about Selenium Grid a lot in our YouTube channel. And also we have already discussed about the Selenium Grid setup with Docker in our YouTube channel of Exit Automation, something like this. You can see there is something called a Selenium Grid with Docker where we already discussed about an introduction to Selenium Grid with Docker, initiating Docker Selenium Grid container setup, writing code for Selenium Grid or to run on multiple containers in parallel and setting Selenium Grid setup using Docker Compose file. So we already discussed about all these discussion. So again, this setup that you are seeing in here is going to be pretty much straightforward and easier while working with Docker. So if you want to try with Docker first, you can go ahead and do that by watching this video. But if you're going to be very keen on running the Selenium Grid on the Kubernetes, starting this section is going to be something that you should be looking for. So as I told you before, Selenium by itself has many Docker images, which is available in hub.docker.com. And some of the images are going to look something like this. You can see there is something called a Selenium slash base, which includes the Java runtime and Selenium server jar. And there is something called as hub, node with different browsers, similarly node with the different browsers with debug capabilities and with the VNC server installed on it. So these are something that you can actually use the Selenium node within the Kubernetes to attach and run how things work. So as I said, this is what is a Selenium grid setup is all about and this is the Selenium's Docker images and stuff. And now with Kubernetes, we are going to create a Kubernetes architecture to make sure that the Selenium hub is running and the pods which is going to run the different selenium nodes in different pods so how is our kubernetes architecture of selenium grid setup is going to look like then it's going to be looking something like this as you can see we are going to spin up multiple different pods something like this and each and every part is going to have different images of selenium node so one node is going to hold Selenium node with Chrome and Selenium node with Firefox and Selenium node with Opera. 
and these nodes are going to have different IP address as we already discussed in our earlier videos and these parts are then going to communicate with what is called as a hub and again this is exactly the same setup we just saw earlier in the architecture so there is going to be one hub and there are going to be multiple different nodes which are going to communicate with the hub but they are not going to directly communicate this time rather as discussed in our earlier video of earlier section like services we are going to communicate with a service so basically service is going to hold only a specific static IP address in there and this IP address is going to be used for the automation test that we are going to be executing because if you know in Selenium we are going to be passing the Selenium hubs URL which is nothing but the local host colon 444 slash WD slash hub and that's the URL that you're going to be getting from the service and this service URL is going to be something which is going to be static which is not going to be changed ever even if the part dies it will resurrect and once it resurrects the IP address will change but the service IP will never change so all these parts are going to communicate via these services and the services is going to take care of all the IP address and stuff for you so you can directly call the IP address of service within your testing code to make sure that you can communicate with the Selenium grid setup so this is how the Kubernetes Selenium architecture is going to look like and this is what we are going to be making in this particular section so as that said the following topics are super important for this section and some of them are like what is parts what is a replication controller what are services and some of the basic kubectl commands and of course minikube installation done within your machine so make sure you have all these setup already in place if you have already skipped my section one so please go ahead and watch there because those are some of the stepping stones for this section to get going more fluidly without actually getting struck with how these things are actually working so we are going to make use of few nitty-gritty tools as well in this particular section that way it's going to be even more easier while working with the yaml file and with the kubernetes itself so we are going to make use of some of the tools in visual studio code something like these they are something very very useful while working with the kubernetes itself you can see the number of downloads is skyrocketing a lot of people are really using this in market right now so please make sure that you also install them in Visual Studio Code while working with it we are going to be doing that in this particular section and we'll see how things work so let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work so stay tuned for our next video thank you